Hey guys, quick video on the pin in wags very quickly and easily with contrast pin. Two main paints we're using uh, Gold Grunt of Fur and Basilicum Grey. These are going over a Wraithbone primer. Quick trick with the uh, contrast paints, really need to shake them, like, really need to shake them. They separate like no one's business. Step one, Gorgon Affair. Just going to slop this over everywhere apart from these areas of skin. So you'll be able to see when I do it. So the leg area and the face, but not the tufts. Big brush, just type a slop it on. Go crazy. You can always soak it up with a dry brush afterwards if you need to. Super easy. You can really crank these wags out, especially if you're doing a big shark who's hard to go alongside the Rohan at War set that just came out like I am. Really nice and simple. Really straightforward. Just try not to grab the skin, but it doesn't really matter because we'll be blending some grey into it shortly. Don't need to do it particularly straight either but you do need to do this all reasonably quickly because we want to be playing with that wet paint when we get to the grey for the skin just do the whole model in brown first if I was caring a little bit more about the blend I'd be doing the blended areas like first and then doing the rest of the fur but I am painting dozens of these guys, so I need to be able to do it quickly. Quick trick as well with these contrast paints, with uh, Games Workshop's lovely pricing model, they are crazy money. Get a painting puck, eBay, dirt cheap, print your own if you've got a 3D printer. But uh, yeah, I think they're about £2.50 each or something. I know Games Workshop do their own one for, uh, I think it's five or now. Super handy. Absolute solid investment. Much better than blue tacking them, because that doesn't always work. Let's get nice, good coverage. Slop it on. Blend it back into the bits you haven't done yet. Try and get it a little bit straight around the skin, but as I said before, it doesn't really matter. We're not going for perfection when we're blasting it with contrast paint. Oh, lovely. There we go, first mistake. Quick wipe, don't want it settling on, but the grey is going to absolutely cover that, you'll be able to see. Doesn't need to be perfect, because we're going for a grey brownie blend in just a tick. I'm using a medium shade brush on this one, don't want to mess around, keep knocking my camera. Apologies, I have no equipment. All right, I don't want to funny about too much with it. I will lose the opportunity to do it in these former blender. So wash your brush. The silicon gray. Straight on face first, because that's where the uh, more noticeable blend is happening. So just straight in there. Get it nice and thick on your brush, but not too much. And get the concentration of the thicker paint further into the face and then bring it in for the blend. Sort of drag it back in there and then just sort of dab your brush in to blend it in. Then just drag your brush out and you'll drag both colors back out across the face. As long as you don't drag it out too far. So I'll show you here. So. Thicker colour there, dab it on there, and drag that brown out into the grey. Dab, 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 drag, drag, drag. Dab, dab, drag, drag. 
tap tap drag 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 then you just want to slop a bit more on to get that contrast effect oh that is way too much knock a bit off your brush suck a little bit off minding out for the pun and just whack it on there we can we're not playing games here you can see the bits i've missed doesn't matter i'll blend some grain to that i do not care i need hundreds of these bad boys well not hundreds but i think i've got like 36 of them to paint i've gone a bit crazy half them aren't even built crazy 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 just dab now wipe off some gray see this bit pull some gray and brown in nicer see that's a nicer uh, adjustment and see bits i've missed of the brown as well and then just drag it around nice dab 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 dip dab dab nice and blended in and just score around the sides of the mouth and the lips doesn't matter if you get it on anything that you don't want it on because wraith bone is a lovely base paint that will be used to cover up any mistakes so that's a face sorted <coughs> let's get the legs just slop it on don't need to dab as much on these because it's already somewhat dried you're not going to get as blended effect <coughs> if you wanted the nice contrast blended effect more you'd have done these bits sort of separately ish there you go that's a nice blend there doesn't matter if you get grey in your brown it's all just going to look nice this is not a good camera angle but hey ho here we go all right other leg slop it on dab 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 blend dab 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 blend foot slide it in underneath try not to catch brown if you can but it's all nice and wet so you can just go and dab your brush on and you can blend any gray that you get onto the brown back into the brown I can see there's a, a big slab of brown on his foot there so i'm just going to bring a bit of brown gray in and just slide that brown off just blend it out of there blendy blendy blend i love these contrast paints there we go two more legs blab blab dab 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 Blend, blend, blend. Then you're getting this brownie grey skin, similar look to how they look on the Games Workshop website. Dab, 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 and there we go. But always, when you're doing this blend, don't slop the when you've dipped your brush in the paint pot, don't just slop it straight into the cross section where it's the cross section the the merging area where the line where there's brown and not grey don't just dab a load of paint in there because you'll it'll capillary action will draw all of the grey back into the brown so try and get the bulk of it off like somewhere further down the leg like there and then just pull it up to where you need it to go big trick with contrast paint as well is when you're done you're done leave it you'll just ruin it because as soon as it starts to set if you take a brush or anything anywhere near it, you'll ruin the effect and it won't look like one solid colour. Nice, easy, peasy, lemons, squeezy, beautiful. B E A beautiful. Nice and easy. So there's a finished one. And I've just said that rule and I've just noticed that I've missed that there. So I'm just going to. Tiny bit of brown you just want to sort of try and draw up what's already there you're not going to really be able to see this bit because there's going to be a rider on it but occasionally there's not going to be a rider on it and i'm going to have the uh, little fur inserts that i'll be able to pop in instead now there's that done uh next step if it's an open mouth one you want to get some red on there i would say flesh terror red uh just all in there uh use a bit of wraith bone first if you've got any mess um and then highlight with like <sighs> I'd say like a Vallejo flat red or just nice medium red. Just draw a couple of lines down the tongue to highlight that. Uh, for the teeth, you can't go wrong with Skeleton Horde. That's what I'll be using. So that one's done. Here's one I made earlier. When you're using contrast on fur especially, 
you'll notice lots of cases where there's little dots where it hasn't soaked through because it isn't it isn't really a wash it's a bit thicker this one isn't too bad actually but you'll notice there's a few little dots of wraithbone poking through i tend not to use contrast as the uh, one and only step when i do it i like to dry brush over the top because this stuff tends to scratch off as well so that's an extra bit of protection before you varnish if you do but uh next step there it's going to be for the teeth <clears throat> for that we're going to want some beautiful delightful favorite paint in the world Let's give it a nice good shake oh it's gotten hard so we'll put the medium shade brush away and we're getting a what even is this it's a medium layer brush it is the other brush i use pretty much i use pretty much these two brushes for and a dry brush for almost all of my painting I also have a, uh, this is the masterclass one you got in the big set of army painter brushes, but I think it's the, it, just detail brush, I think it's called, the actual size of it. I'm not too fussed about fancy brushes, so then we just slop this, not too thickly, just slop this into the tooth gap. And that is not setting nicely. I wonder if I have picked up the wrong one where the teeth are wet. I think I may have. Or is it just not settling very well? The other trouble with these Lord of the Rings minis is that that old, that it can be difficult to get the detail to show up through it. Like sometimes you'll want to wash over it and you can just say see the detail on the mini when it's undercoated, but you put like a wash or a contrast up for it. And it just does not play ball. There we go. It just won't recess in because the details are so subtle, so very subtle. So the way you get around that is you paint, is you have to paint the detail in yourself to extend. That's where it gets a little bit trickier and a bit more time consuming. One thing I don't like about the plastic wags is the obvious buck teeth they have. The way I'll solve that is I will be painting like a very fine brown line down the middle of that tooth. It won't look amazing, but it, at a glance it won't look like a massive angry chipmunk, which is always good. Now, <clears throat> next steps after this, you can call it there pretty much once you've got the tongue, if you've done the tongue, and the roof of the mouth, it's an open mouth one, and the teeth. You can leave it there, that is pretty nice to be honest. Um, I'd say that's pretty much like a battle ready. Go for it. Uh, I would say if you're leaving it with this, get some Agrax Earth shade and just dot it onto where the uh, white bits are go. I wouldn't go back at it with contrast because it is so thick and it'll glaze over the top of whatever you put it on. Whereas you can more easily let some Agrax sink into the recesses and just tap your thumb on it to take it off the raised areas that are covered and you'll cover up the nice gaps. Uh, what I'll probably be doing with these guys, if I can ever be bothered, is I'll be dry brushing something like a... Uh, Either like a steel, I have to do some test painting, but either there's some steel legion drab or some uh, Zandri dust, probably Zandri dust, starting at a heavier dry brush at the top going down more subtly and some sort of grey dry brush over the face as well. Just a nice gentle one just to give it a little bit more texture because you can see on this side where it hasn't really sank in as much and you're not getting that nice effect. Then I might even give it an Agrax Earth shade wash, but in terms of getting things like that, you can see a big dot of white there. In terms of getting things on the table really quickly, you cannot beat these contrast paints. I mean, this is minutes and it's done to a, what I would consider an acceptable standard. But yeah, so that's my little first paint tutorial using contrast paints on a wag. Thanks, guys. Bye.